welcome to the first installment of the Disney Makeup How To The Princess Collection tutorials. Um, whether you're just looking to enhance your cosplay, or you are going to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party this fall, um, or you just love to Disney Bound in the parks, I am super excited that you guys have joined me and hope that you will find some of these tips useful. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to prime our face. The primer that I'm using is the Laura Geller Spackle Hydrating Primer. I am just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and then work it into my skin. You want to find a primer that works best for you. Some people have combination skin, some people have oily skin. They may want something more mattifying. I have very dry skin, so a hydrator is very important for me. There's lots of different types of products out there. You just want to find something that works best for you. We're now going to move on to the Smashbox Reduce Redness Primer. Um, this is actually a green tinted primer. I'm just putting a little finger's worth on around my nose and around my cheeks and down to my chin. This will just help to eliminate any redness that I may have or blemishes or color correcting on my skin. The Smashbox product is really great for this. However, it is expensive, so I do not buy the full size product. That is about $38. I just buy the small travel size, which is $15, and this lasts me for quite a few months because I'm not putting all over my skin. The next product is the is my foundation. This is the Tarte Face Tape Foundation in the color 12B Fair Beige. I have a lot of pink undertones to my skin, so all I did was go into Ulta and ask them to color match me to the right color because I have a lot of issues with finding foundations that don't make me look orange, and this was a great match. If you're struggling to find that right color, I suggest trying out Tarte. Um, it's got a nice full coverage, but it doesn't feel cakey or heavy. It's rather light, and they also have a lot of colors, so you're definitely bound to find something that will work for you, and it also doesn't have a bad smell. I'm just using a basic beauty sponge. I bought these on Amazon. They came in a pack of five. I believe the, the brand was called Beaky, B-E-A-K-E-Y. They were about $8. I didn't invest in anything super expensive. This worked really well for what I needed it to. And I want to, you want to make sure that the sponge is wet. That will help your product not seep into the sponge as much and also to create that flawless effect that we're trying to achieve for the princesses. The next step is not something that the Friends of the Princesses do. They do not contour, highlight, or bronze, but I do not have the same face structures as them. They are all chosen because they look similar. Um, so I am going to use the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the color Light and the NYX Contour Brush in 05. I'm just dabbing a little bit of the bronzer. I'm going to put it around my hairline, around my forehead. This will help to create some dimension. It will also help if you have a longer forehead or a wider forehead to shorten it just a little bit. Especially for photos, this helps to achieve a little more dimension. And then you can just take a basic foundation brush and buff it out. Now for my contour, the contour palette that I normally use is the Mali Shimmer Shape and Glow. However, it shattered about two minutes before this video, so I substituted it with the Ben Nye Pressed Eyeshadow in Cork. This is a very taupe color. You want to make sure you don't have a lot of orange in your contour. You're looking to create shadow. A lot of times what adds those extra 10 camera pounds is the fact that a camera cannot see shadows or bone structures as well as the naked eye. So we want to create that, create those shadows that it will pick up. So you want to take that just along from the hairline down along your natural bone structure right underneath that bone line. And then you can also take it along the jaw line to chisel out the jaw. This will help to also remove any uh, double chins. Now the blush that Ariel uses is the Ben Nye blush in the color coral. Now Ben Nye makeup is great however it is stage makeup. It's meant to last for a while and to be very pigmented so you want to just lightly tap your brush into the color and lightly brush it onto your face. You can always add more. It's harder to take it away. You don't want to 
be surprised with how much color you get onto your brush at once. So just lightly brush it up into the hairline. Start on the apple of your cheeks. Again, you can always add more. It's hard to take it away. And if you feel you need to brush it out a little bit, you can always buff it out with a basic foundation brush. Next, we're going to move on to the eyes. I'm going to start by curling my lashes. This is just a basic e.l.f. lash curler. I got it for about $3 over at Old Navy. You can also find them at Ulta. You're just going to crimp the lashes and you can tilt the curler up just a little bit to curl them a little more. Don't pull or anything. You don't want to pull out your lashes. And then for me, I use three mascaras. The first one is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher in the color brown. This to me almost acts like my mascara primer. I think it works well to separate my lashes and to just get them in the shape that I want them to be in for my volumizing mascara. Now you don't have to use three mascaras. This is just my little idiosyncrasy. Just find something that works best for you. Um, and then some people may say that you shouldn't do your lashes first. It's, it's up to you. For me, I tend to get a lot of mascara on my lids. So I would rather just clean them up first rather than mess up my eyeshadow and have to start all over. You just want to find what works for you. Now the next mascara is the Too Faced Mascara. I'm not going to mention the rest of the name of the brand just because it's not the most G-rated name and in case we have any princesses in training. But you can find it at Ulta. It's a pretty popular brand, so all you have to do is search for Too Faced. It should pop up. What's nice about this wand is that it's hourglass shaped. So it gives a lot of great volume, but it is a little clumpy. So you just want to take your time, kind of wiggle the, the wand through the lashes. As you're going, you can kind of close your eyes and that will help to curl the lashes upward also. And because this is rather clumpy, I am going to use an e.l.f. eyelash comb or mascara, mascara comb, and just work out the clumps. The final mascara that I'm going to be using is the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. Um, this is a sample size. I got it at Ulta. I may invest in the big one at some point because it's a nice mascara, but it's got a, a slimmer uh, barrel to it but it does give a really good volume and I like how this finishes off the lashes. It also helps to remove any excess clumps from the Too Faced mascara. You can also add fake lashes if you would like with lash glue. Um, if you were looking to make a little bit more of a dramatic look, you can certainly add those if you were especially going to a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party or cosplaying or something to that effect and you want more dramatic eyelashes, you can certainly add those as well. Now I'm going to be adding the NYX HD Concealer in the color CW to my eyelids. This is just a good step no matter what because it will help create a flawless base for your eyelids in case you have any color issues. Um, but for me this also helps to cover over any blemishes or mistakes I may have made with my mascara. I'm just going to take a basic um, e.l.f. concealer brush and paint that over the lids just so that it's nice and even. You could also use a beauty sponge for this as well. I just like the concealer the brush because it's smaller. And then you just want to cover all over the lid, make it nice and even, and then go up right under the brow too. This will also help your eyeshadow to stay on because it gives the powder something to adhere to. Now for the lid color for the princesses, uh, most of the girls use the Ben Nye Pressed Shadow in the color Toast. This is used for most of the princesses as their base, found, base uh, eyeshadow color. I'm just going to clean off my brush in between uses. Whoops. This is the J Cat Beauty Dry Brush Cleaner. 
just sweep your brush over the top of it. This is a great way to clean in between uses. I'm going to apply the color Toast all over my eyelids. This is just a basic beige color, so if you are looking to find something similar, there are many brands out there that will be something very close to this color. You don't have to spend $10 on this particular color. The color Pop, it's a princess thing palette, also has a nice beige color that is very similar. It's a little darker, but this would that would be a fine option as well. For the crease color, we are going to go back to the Ben Nye Pressed Eyeshadow in the color Cork. I am going to take an e.l.f. brush. This is the e.l.f. blending brush. What's really nice about this brush is it's kind of rounded and a little bit square on the edges. So this fits, fits into the crease really nicely. This is what I use every day for my crease colors. I'm just going to take a little bit of the eyeshadow again. Less is more. Work lightly and then add add more as you need to. And I'm going to start in the outer V and I'm going to keep my eyes open. Now you can close a little bit as you go towards the outside just to get that outer V on the bottom lid. But you want to keep them open to to find your natural crease line. If you have hooded eyes or, um, or semi-hooded eyes, you can bring that color up closer to the brow line that will help to make the eyes look a little more open so that when your eyes are open you do see color these princesses are very youthful and vibrant so they have nice wide open eyes that's the image that we're looking to create here and just do it to take your time this is just windshield wiper motions slightly sweeping it over back and forth over the lid until you get a nice color The next color that we're going to do is the Ben Nye Blush in Coral. Ariel uses this on the outside lids of her eyes. So you're going to go from the outside V to about halfway onto the lid. Depending on how you like to put your colors, you may want a little more coral. So you may want to blend that out a little closer to the inner corner of the eye, or if you want a little more yellow, you might pull back on the coral a little bit. That's kind of up to you. For me, I like a lot more yellow. I think having a lighter color towards the inside of my eye makes my eye look more open and a little bit more awake. So I'm just going to keep that coral towards the outside and then lightly blend it towards the middle. And I'm just using a basic e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. It's a shorter brush, but the bristles are more densely packed, so that will help you pack on your color a lot easier. The last color for Ariel's eyes are, it's the Ben Nye Pearl Sheen eyeshadow in gold. I love this eyeshadow for just everyday use. I use it for a lot of different looks, when, even when I'm going to work. It's just a nice basic gold color. And I'm going to apply this towards the inside of my lids and then blend that into the coral, into the halfway point. What's really cool about Ariel's eyeshadow is that when you're combining the brown and the coral and the gold together, it kind of looks like a sunset, especially when you're putting it with her hair. It just really makes the entire look pop. And I also kind of think it looks like a fish with the coral and the gold. So you're just going to put that, pack that on towards the middle of the eye. Again, your, it's your decision how much coral to gold ratio you want to have. And then I'm taking my e.l.f. fluffy blending brush. And this is an important part. You want to make sure that you just sweep this blending brush over all the colors. Blend them in together to make them seamlessly transition into each other. This will also remove any excess powder that you have on the eyelids and just finish off the look. So for eyeliner, I'm going to use the NYX Epic, uh, Epic Ink Eyeliner. This is a felt tip brush. I think this is so much easier to use than a liquid liner um, or even a pencil. It's kind of like a pen, so you're, it's a lot easier to hold and you can just draw it on. I'm not 
an expert at doing eyeliners by any means. You just want to take your time. Slow and steady wins the race here. But I just find that the felt tip ones are so much easier to use. So if you are struggling with using a liquid liner or a pencil liner and making it kind of messy, try the felt tip. Just take your time and go along the bottom edge of your lashes. Now you don't want to do a huge flick or a wing eyeliner look to this because the princesses again are youthful and they're wide-eyed so you want to finish the look but don't go overboard on the on the wing especially if you're doing a character who has more round eyes especially like Snow White. Now I also put on a little bit of um, a black eyeshadow. The color that I'm using is from the It's a Princess Thing palette from ColourPop. You can see I use this palette a lot. They have some great colors, but I'm just using the bottom color in black. And I'm going to take a double-ended eyebrow brush. This has an angled brush on one side and a spoolie on the other. I'm just going to put a little bit of black powder over top of that felt tip liner. This will help to soften the look and just to fill in anywhere I may have made a mistake. If you are going to put eyeliner on the bottom of your eyes, make sure that you don't use something harsh like a liner, like a liquid liner or even the felt tip liner. I would suggest just doing the the powder on the bottom. You do not want to outline the entire bottom lid either because what that will do is make your eyes look smaller, which we don't want to do. We want to make them look big and vibrant. So if you're going to put powder on the bottom, just do it on the tiniest little bit on the outside V there on the bottom. You can also add a white eyeliner to the bottom inside of your lid. That will also help to make your eyes brighter and to look a little more wide. For Ariel's lipstick, she uses the Ben Nye lipstick in natural. And for her eyeliner, for, I'm sorry, not her eyeliner, for her lip liner, she uses the Ben Nye lip pencil in the color Salsa. The colors are very similar, but they're not exactly the same because Disney likes to use a two-toned effect. You won't necessarily notice the difference in the color, but it does give a little bit more dimension to the lips. You just want to use just use it on the outside of your lip draw it in as, as you would normally would. If you have any um, symmetrical issues with your lips, this is where you can fill them in or adjust them as needed. Just draw, draw how you want them. I'm just being going very carefully. If you make any mistakes or you color outside the lines, you can just grab a little concealer on a, on a regular concealer brush and just kind of paint over them to cover it up but this will help the lipstick to stay in place. So going back to the Ben Nye lipstick in natural, um, in the parks, the only color that is used is the natural lipstick. I will show you what it looks like by itself. With the color that they use, the deep cherry wig color, this looks really good. For me, my wig is called dark red. It's a little bit redder. So I like to add a couple extra colors. Normally they, they would go on first because they are definitely matte. This is the color pop line in Ariel and in Belle. The Ariel color is more beige colored, a little bit darker. I mean, a little more taupe, I guess. Um, I would normally start with her first and put that on my lips. And then I would add just a little bit of Belle. Belle has a bit more rosy color. She's a little more auburn. And this is a great color to use just every day. I use her when I'm going to work. It's a great, it's a great color. What's great about the color pop too is because it's so matte, you don't feel like you have lipstick on. They're not sticky. They're just, and they don't budge. They'll stay on all day. So this is a great color to start as your base. Then I will definitely take the, the last bit and put the Ariel Natural lipstick over top of that. That would be how I would finish my look to get this color that I have right now. The last step I'm going to be doing is my eyebrows. If you were just Disney bounding in the park, you would not do this step unless you have red hair. Um, this would be only if you're putting on a wig. 
but this is the Ben Nye Pressed Eyeshadow in the color Raisin. And I'm going back over my my eyebrows with that eyebrow, I, sorry, eyebrow brush. Um, I'm going to just run the spoolie through to make sure that they're all, all the hairs are facing the same way. And then I'm just going to carefully paint in that raisin color. It's kind of an auburn, auburn look. Um, there's always been a, a debate as to what color Ariel's eyebrows are. In the movie, her eyebrows are brown, but a lot of girls tend to like to add a little red to this. So I think this is a good compromise color. Now I have a little bit bushier eyebrows. So I just try to keep mine thin. Again, if you want to, you can always use some concealer to hide any extra eyebrows you don't want to color in. And I'm just working them in. If I wanted to make this a little more of a dramatic red, I would wet the brush and I would wet the powder. Usually I start with dry first and then as I'm finishing up, I might just take a little bit of a wet powder and put it over top. But just take your time. I, I'm not... An eyebrow expert by any means but just follow your natural line you can cheat it a little bit make sure that especially with the princesses you're not doing any crazy angles you want to keep the angles rounded especially at the the beginning part of your eyebrows they don't they don't angle them or square them off and if you do make any mistakes you can definitely go back in with a concealer brush um, I just took a little bit on my my NYX concealer brush and painted over where I made my mistakes. And you can take your spoolie and just run it through the eyebrows as well to help disperse that color evenly. So again, here's the concealer. Just a little bit is enough. We don't want a whole lot. And I'm just lightly going under my brow. This is also not a bad thing to do, even if you didn't make a huge mistake. This just kind of finishes off the look and hides away any stray hairs that you may not have decided to color in. Just go along the tops and the under part. And that's it. You are done. That is Ariel. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you want to show me your looks and how you did your princess makeup, we can use the hashtag CL makeup challenge. You can use it on Facebook or Instagram. Um, show us your looks or if you have any other Disney bound makeup looks that you've tried, I'd love to see them. And I hope you join me next time. Mm -hmm.